Greetings and welcome to Your Inspirations. I'm Mary Beth Temple for Hooked for Life. And in this video, we're going to take a closer look at the Tuck Stitch Knit Blanket. Now, this is a really interesting textural piece. It has borders and interior panels of moss stitch and this really, really cool tuck stitch that gives you a ton of texture. Now, it might be a little off-putting if you've never tried it before, but like many things in knitting and crochet, the whole issue is knowing where to stick the needle, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So to make this piece, you're going to need seven balls of Bernat Maker Home Deck. We used cream, but you can use whatever color suits your taste and home decor. You're going to need a size US 11 or eight millimeter circular knitting needle, 36 inches, 91 and a half centimeters long, or longer is okay, or size needed to obtain gauge, of course. Now, uh, we are not going to knit in the round, but you need a nice long cable to accommodate the large number of stitches. You will also need some locking stitch markers. Now, not the ring markers, because it's important that you mark the stitch and not the needle. But let's go ahead and take a closer look at the tuck stitch panels. Now, as I mentioned, you have this moss stitch action going on on either side of the tuck stitch panels and at the beginning and the end, so I have done that. I have also actually knit the first 18 rows because I wanted you to see, you know, what it looks like. So you will have more tuck stitch panels and you will have more moss stitch than I have. But uh, we're going to take a look at the panel. So as I mentioned, we have close-up photos here, and I'm going to show you on the video as well. So every time there's going to be a tuck stitch row, which in the case of this pattern repeat is the seventh row and the 13th row, there will be markers that were placed previously. So you can see that my markers are sitting right here. I placed them in a previous row. Now, they're on the wrong side of the work because that's where I want them, but I have on occasion, and I'm gonna do it just so you can see, been knitting away and not paying attention and somehow the marker wound up on the right side. Don't make yourself crazy if that happens, just push it through like I just did. Um, so you want the markers to sit on the wrong side, but again, if they accidentally wind up on the right side, it's totally not a big deal. So let's go ahead, I'm going to work on the seventh row. Oh, I forgot to tell you, in addition to all these fabulous photos and the text written out as we so often have, we also have a diagram and you will notice on the diagram that there are two tuck stitches being made in the seventh row and one in the 13th and then two in the seventh, one in the 13th, etc. So um, for those of you that prefer the diagram to the text, we have that for you as well. So let's take a look at the seventh row. So the tuck panel instructions are only written for the actual panels. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is keep my moss stitch in the pattern as established up to the tuck panel. So that's the first thing I have to knit. And you will notice as you get things established that that stitch before the tuck panel and after the tuck panel is maintained in reverse stocking stitch. You'll follow the instructions to get started, but once you, uh, once you have some knitting done, it really becomes a lot more intuitive. So next thing I'm going to do is knit six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Insert left hand needle from wrong side through two vertical bars of first marked stitch, six rows below. That's a lot of text. But what it basically means is take your left hand needle tip and grab both sides of the stitch that you have marked. Now remember, when you are knitting, you want to mark the stitch, not the knitting needle. That's why we tell you you have to have the um, the locking stitch markers instead of the ring. So I'm going to put my left hand needle under one side 
of that marked stitch, there it is, and there's the other side. So I'm actually picking up two bars. I'm putting that on my left hand needle and I'm gonna take that stitch marker out so it's out of my way. I'm going to knit two together and those two bars count as one. So those two bars plus the stitch to the left. Knit two together. Now I'm going to knit three. One, two, three, purl one. Place marker on the last stitch. So again, I'm gonna grab the marker that I just used. I'm gonna mark the stitch, not the needle. And I'm gonna flop it over to the wrong side just because it makes my life easier. But again, if it pops to the front, eh, no big deal. You can fix that later. Knit three. One, two, three. And we're gonna do that same trick again. Insert left hand needle from wrong side through two vertical bars of second mark stitch six rows below and then knit two together. So once again, grabbing my left hand needle, going to the wrong side of the work. I'm looking for the stitch six rows below that I have marked. And I have marked one leg of the stitch, but I need both legs of the stitch. So the one I've marked and the other half of the stitch. So the stitch goes like that, right? So I need both legs of that stitch. I'm gonna take the marker out and get rid of it. I'm going to knit two together where one of the knit two togethers is the two bars of the stitch that I picked up and the other one is the next stitch on my left hand needle. and then knit two, I'll have two left. And then I'm going to continue across in moss stitch. So again, if you're knitting the whole blanket, you will have a much wider moss stitch panel here than I have because I just made a sample and then you will do that tuck stitch panel again and then you will do more moss stitch and then you will do it again and then you will do more moss stitch. Okay, let's just take a look at this real quick. So you see my tucks are starting to build up. And you see on the back, the way it's pulled up. And then you see, because my next tuck row is the 13th row where I only have one tuck stitch. So I only have one marker on that row because moving forward, I'm going to only have one tuck stitch like we saw in the diagram. So. Moving on now for the eighth to the twelfth rows, um, I'm always going to keep the moss stitch in the pattern as established, and the eighth to the twelfth rows of the tuck panel say beginning on a purl row, work five rows in stocking stitch. So I'm going to work five more rows, and I'm going to come back and we're going to look at the thirteenth row. Now when I'm heading across to do my stocking stitch, it says beginning on a purl row. Once again, after you have a few rows of the pattern established, established it's obvious which side is the wrong side of the stocking stitch and which side is the right side. Um, however, I do recommend whatever marking system you have to check off rows that you have knit, whether that's a little scratch paper or you like to print out the pattern and write on the pattern, whatever you like to do, because if you put the work down for whatever reason and come back, it's really great to know what row you are on. So when I knit this sample, I, I, sat and I made a little pencil tick mark at the end of every row so I knew that where I was. So I'm gonna go ahead and knit the eighth to the twelfth rows off camera and we're going to come back and take a look at the thirteenth row. Okay, I'm getting ready to knit the thirteenth row of the tuck panel. I have done my border in moss stitch as established. So here we go. So remember on the tuck stitch rows, not only are we creating the tuck stitch, but we are setting up markers for the next time that we have to do the tuck stitch. So we're going to knit two, one, two, purl one, place marker on the last stitch made, and 
Once again, slide it to the back. You can always move it if you have to. Knit three. One, two, three. Now this tuck stitch is slightly different than the other one because the angle is going in a different direction. So we are going to use the right hand needle to pick up the stitches instead of the left hand needle. So it says insert right hand needle from wrong side through two vertical bars of marked stitch six rows below. So we've only got one marker six rows below. So that's our guy. Once again, you have to find the whole stitch. See, there's the whole stitch. So you pick up both loops of that stitch. And then once again, once I'm sure that's on there firmly, I'm going to take that marker off. I'm going to use it again in a minute. I'm going to place that on the left hand needle. And I'm going to knit two together, treating those two as one and the next stitch on the left hand needle as one. Oh, <laughs> It'd be easier if I could have found my working yarn. There we go. Knit two together. Now we're going to knit three, one, two, three, purl one, place second marker on last stitch. Here's my second marker. That's the one I just took off the other guy. Hook that up, let it go to the back. And then I should have six left in my tuck stitch panel. One, two, three, four, five, six, knit six. And then once again, I'm going to go in the moss stitch and then my next tuck panel, etc., 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 the way that I have set up the, uh, the way that I have set up the whole blanket. So I'm just going to put that down. I want to take a look at the very end. When we're all finished, we're going to make the tassels and you're going to make 12 by wrapping the yarn around a 10 inch piece of cardboard 30 times, tie securely at one end. So at that end, you're putting a tie through the loop so you have something to uh, hold it together at the top, cut across the opposite end. So I have a tie at one fold, I have cut ends at the other fold, and then it says wrap yarn six times around tassel one and a half inches or four centimeters from tight end and fasten securely and then do it again two and three quarter inches or seven centimeters from tied end and fasten securely and then um, so that's what gives us let's get a little closer here that's what gives us our double tie so that's it for the tassels and then you uh, secure the tassels and you can do that when you uh, tie off the top of the tassel use a nice long piece of yarn so you have that to secure it to the blanket when you're done and that's all there is to it I hope you had a wonderful time joining us here at Yarnspirations for the Tuck Stitch Knit Blanket. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel for more content weekly on knitting, crocheting, and other yarny stuff. And we look forward to seeing you again here real soon. Bye-bye.